Okay, uh, so welcome everyone. This is uh, uh, James Rawlings and James Strachan, and we are doing a talk here today for CDCon on what's new with Jenkins X3. Thank you, James. Uh, so next slide. Yeah, so firstly, what is Jenkins X? So let me do a quick one minute overview of what Jenkins X is for those of you who have not seen it before. So Jenkins X is an open source project. It's part of the CDF and it's aimed at trying to automate CI CD on Kubernetes. So once you're using Jenkins X, it will automate your CI and CD for you. In other words, whenever you uh, commit new code into your main Git repository branch, it will automatically create new tagged images and Helm charts and publish those to your container registry and your chart registry. It also automates environments via GitOps. So whenever you create a new release of your new uh, microservice, it automatically creates a pull request in your Git provider to promote the new version of software into your staging or production environments. It also adds something called preview environments. So whenever you create a preview or in a pull request, it will create a brand new environment in Kubernetes. It will run your software in that preview environment so your team can give you fast feedback on your code change before that change merges into the main branch. So it gives you super fast feedback. Finally, uh, Jenkins X supports chat ops and pull requests, which lets you uh, decide to approve code changes, retest things, uh, reject code changes if you're not happy with them, and various other kind of various chat ops commands. Welcome to this short demonstration of Jenkins X. So I'm going to run a little command in the terminal just to watch interactively the pipelines that run in Jenkins X. But the for the rest of this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, the GitHub website. So here's a quick start I've already uh, imported into Jenkins X. Um, I'm going to modify this uh, awesome homepage of this microservice, and I'm going to say very, very awesome. Hello, very awesome stuff. Uh, and I'm going to say this fix and the adds more, adds more awesome. I'm going to create a branch and a pull request for this. I'm going to propose this code change. And I'm going to create a pull request. Now you can see the pull request has started. We've got the pull request pipeline running here. We can see the bottom of the pull request pipeline has started there as well. Now this pull request that's started here we can see there's a link there. I'm going to open that link in a new window. And that link is to the Jenkins X dashboard. The Jenkins X dashboard is a read-only visualization of all of the repositories and pipelines that are running inside your cluster. So it's very easy to link from your pull requests and your releases in your Git provider to this UI so we can visualize what's happening. So we've created a pull request that's triggered uh, the build of the preview environment. It's created a custom image. Um, and we can see from the log, there's uh, the pull request, the preview environment is now available. We can see at the bottom, the URL is there as well. Uh, so if I go back to the pull request, we can see there's a comment now. Pull request built and available at this URL. And if you click on that URL, it opens the hello, very awesome stuff, which is great. So we're testing the preview environment now, running inside Kubernetes, um, using the, our proposed code change before we've agreed to merge the code change, which is great. So we can get quick feedback from our team. Now let's go through what's new in Jenkins X3. So the first thing you'll notice when you start Jenkins X version three is the UI side of things has improved. We have a bunch of different UIs or user interfaces to work with in Jenkins X v3. Uh, the first one is Octant. So Octant is an open source project. It's awesome. It came out of the VMware folks. Um, and it's basically an open source UI for looking at your entire Kubernetes cluster. So using Octant, you can uh, visualize deployments and pods and secrets and config maps and ingresses and all of the different custom resources that are inside your cluster. If you're using Kubernetes to develop, deploy, and test uh, Kubernetes-centric applications, you do need to, at some point, look at the cluster when things go bad or trying to diagnose if things are running properly. So Octant is an awesome user interface for looking inside your cluster. Octant runs locally on your laptop and then uses your uh, the same access control that uh, works with kubectl or the JX command line. So it basically 
uses secure um, ways to access your cluster. It works well with Kubernetes role-based authentication, but lets you visualize everything that you're allowed to see in the Kubernetes cluster. Now, Octant has a plugin mechanism so that it lets you extend uh, Octant to provide different user interfaces. And we have a plugin for Jenkins X that visualizes Jenkins X resources like pipelines, pull requests, preview environments, applications, and so forth. So Octant is a great general purpose UI. You tend to run it on your laptop using the JX UI command, and then you use it locally. Uh, what we often want to do when we've got a team working together via, say, a Git repository, we want to be able to easily link Git pull requests and releases on Git repositories to pipelines and logs. And that's where the dashboard comes in. So the dashboard is basically a read-only uh, web user interface to let you visualize pipelines and logs and steps for um, pull requests and releases. So when you run the dashboard, which comes by default in Jenkins X, uh, the dashboard is automatically linked uh, to all your pull requests and all your releases. So it gives you a really nice way to go from Git to see the pipelines and the logs. Finally, there's a command line. We've always had the command line. And so there's a nice simple command line for those who prefer command lines to uh, web front ends and so forth. In addition, we have a Slack uh, plugin now. So you can get the Slack plugin to notify you on, say, failed releases, or uh, it can direct message you when your pull requests are triggered and pipelines run there. Next slide, please, James. Here's a quick example of, uh, on the left, uh, the Octant user interface, and on the right, the dashboard user interface. So they're nice and clean. Next slide. Um, one of the big changes in V3 of Jenkins X is the architecture. So from 30,000 feet, it looks and feels very similar to Jenkins X V2. It automates CI/CD and it creates pull requests and preview environments and all that kind of stuff. Under the covers, the architecture has changed quite a lot. One of the biggest changes is in V2, we used to have this monolithic command line. Uh, now in V3, every single command in the CLI is a completely separate plugin. Anybody can write new plugins in the command line, and everything is kind of nicely decoupled. So we have a, a plugin for GitOps, a plugin for working with secrets, a plugin for administering a cluster, and so on and so forth. So decoupling the CLI has been a big, big bonus. Um, in addition, we've tried to delegate more and more of the heavy lifting of things in Jenkins X to different services. So we delegate, for example, to Terraform to set up all of the different cloud resources. Um, we'll talk a little bit about external secrets later, but we use external secrets to manage the secret side of things. So the architecture is much simpler, uh, much more modular, much more flexible. Next slide. I wanted to say, uh, just, just to add, I think one of the things in here, I guess one of the big differences from V2 that people might be familiar with was we used to have a, a CLI to, to boot up. Uh, the installation um, and then install all the resources into a cluster. And that was run from the users of the laptop uh, connecting into a cluster. And we've got in here, this is, there's the Git operator, which is basically it's a, an operator running inside the cluster. So it's a real lightweight operator, which is just polling for changes in a cluster Git repository. Now, you know, embracing GitOps, everything that goes into this cluster is via a, um, by a change to a pull request onto a Git repository. And so when that's approved and merged, that change is then generates new YAML and then reflected inside, synchronized inside the cluster using the Git operator. So another one of the big differences probably from, yeah. from V2, it's the same environment. We had so many issues, people you know, running a you know, different environment from outside the cluster doing the installation. But now because it's inside the cluster, I mean, it's a consistent environment, so much, uh, much less problems for installing. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. I, I think another thing we used to have like, essentially a custom installer and the custom installer was completely separate to how we did promotions of your applications whereas now in v3 we just have a single way of deploying anything in any cluster whether it's Jenkins x itself whether it's your applications whether it's you know various plugins like cert manager external dns nginx whatever so we basically just have one way of doing everything by GitOps, which has made everything much much simpler and more flexible yeah, I and mean, again, just as well, another one there was like things like Kuba Health, where we've added in more services to actually help with them to know when things are not going so great or when you to draw your attention when something's not quite right. So we have custom checks to be able to, um, for the installation or for different features of when Jenkins X is running, uh, webhook checks and various other checks that are running. So 
when, you know, it's easier for users to understand when things aren't quite right and how to start diagnosing issues and links to FAQs and various things as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think lots of the, lots of the changes in V3 have been really around how to make it easy, more flexible so it's easier to use on different platforms. We support much more, much, a lot more platforms now, such as you know, really easy to use on-premise, we support OpenShift, we support all the big three clouds, but it's much easier for you to change your installation to use different storage backends, secret providers, and various other kind of things. So yeah, that's a big change. Yeah. Okay, um, I think we're just going to talk a little bit about external secrets. Um, so there's been some really great talks lately um, around um, external secrets. Um, we, uh, we really have embraced uh, GitOps with Jenkins X. Um, there's a lot of projects that, that are promoting the use of GitOps. We, we advocate that as well. Um, it's using, using Git as a way to, for, to protect, um, to introduce changes into your cluster. Uh, by and providing traceability and approvals, and then um, you can actually look at histories and using developer and operational ways of working to control changes going into a cluster is, is proven really, really well. And it's, um, a lot of people are using this, um, and it's prov provided a much cleaner way to be able to understand what's going inside the cluster and protect clusters. And um, one of the things, one of the challenges though, we're using GitOps is, is around secrets. Now, uh, we don't want to be checking real secrets into a Git repository. It can, there are some ways that you can encrypt secrets using SOPs and various other ways, but it can be a little bit, the UX around that can be a little bit hard, using GPG keys and various other things. So the, the, the ramp up for, for doing this um, is, is, is quite a bit, and it's not that easy to get, to get your head around, and it's still checking encrypted code ch changes into a Git repository, which again can introduce risk if you accidentally commit the wrong file. Um, so what the, one of the things we've looked at with B3 is actually using an uh, uh, open source project called External Secrets, which is now part, I think it's one of the six, before Kubernetes. Um, the idea is, is an external secret controller runs inside a cluster you can see in the middle here so there's a controller there and what it does is allow it polls an external secret provider such as vault or google secrets manager um, there's a couple of other ones as well basically cloud provider secrets managers and it polls for real secrets that are stored there um, so what this happens is in this whole when we're using embracing gitops it means that we can we can generate uh, we can make add uh, pull request onto our cloud, onto, sorry, onto our Git provider for our cluster. We can add a Helm chart, for example. Inside there, there may be a Kubernetes secret. Now, when those, when we have, um, when we detect changes from our boot operator inside the cluster, we actually, we see that there's a Kubernetes uh, secret inside that Helm chart when we template the YAML, and we actually switch that to be an external secret. This external secret is a custom resource from the external secrets project. And it's just a placeholder that points to different um, places within your secrets provider of where, how the controller, or the secrets controller, can go and retrieve and fetch the real secrets values. And there's quite a lot going on here, but we're gonna have a little demo just to kind of demonstrate, to explain this um, uh, here now. So with that in mind, let's try and switch this. Um, we have a Jenkins X installation running on a, a Google uh, a GCP Google Container Engine cluster, um, which we can see. Let's bring up a terminal. Um, yeah. let's do, there we go. So let's do kubectl nodes. So we've got a nice uh, cluster here, and we've installed Jenkins X already. So we actually have already a, an application running in our uh, staging environment. So we can go into the namespace for our staging environment, kubectl get pods. And here we can see we've got an application that's running here. Now, earlier on today, what we did was uh, added in a for our application, it's, the CICD is being provided by Jenkins X, so any change we push into this repository gets, um, the, the pipelines are run within this cluster, the, uh, the chart is then added onto the cluster Git repository, which contains a secret. Let's go and have a look at this. You can see we added in a Kubernetes secret, and that says, uh, my secret 
called with two values of username and password through Mumbai. And when we go back to our, our site here, that's a Helm chart, that's generated a Helm chart that contains Kubernetes secret. And when this was released, the release pipeline, let's go and have a look at this. Let's go and have a look at, James is mentioning the dashboard here. So we can see we had a promote step when that pipeline ran, and that created a pull request on our cluster Git repository. So let's go and have a look at this. Here we can see we had a, the promote step was a Helm chart version update of version 0.08. And that was added onto our staging environment. Now, what's interesting is that is the change here that's been pushed onto our uh, cluster Git repository. Changes were detected and now the, uh, the Git operator has generated, has templated all the YAML from that Helm template and has swapped the Kubernetes secret with the external secret. So let's go and have a look at this. You can see we've got a regenerated pull request. And in here, you can see rather than the Kubernetes secret, we now have our external secret. And these are the places, the coordinates of where to go and find the real value for that secret in Google Secrets Manager, which has been configured. So when that gets merged, then going back to our diagram, that gets merged and the applied. So we've got an external secrets resource actually inside the cluster. Now, if we go back to our cluster, we can see QCTL. Um, we can actually do actually let's do JX edit secret as I. So we can have some JX tooling. JX secret, sorry. Secret edit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have an interactive way using the CLI, as James mentioned, some ways of actually interacting with um, the user interface. So my secret, we could then go and override some values here of username and password. So let's go with um, wine and cheese. So what this is doing is that's going to talk to our secrets provider, which in this case is Google Secrets Manager. And it's going to create a new version here, and that's going to the secrets controller is going to detect that change. It's going to go and fetch that secrets and populate the Kubernetes secret. So let's go and have a look at QCTL get secrets. And so YAML. We're going to use a little tool called KSD to decrypt it and here we go we've got wine and cheese now that's good but just to complete that as well let's go and have a look at google secrets manager just to show from this point of view as well we've got our secrets in in secrets manager um here we can see if we do this let's go and view the secret value here we can see we've got wine and cheese as the password and username let's create a brand new version using this ui and then Let's do James and James, because two James is uh, the way, and then create a new secret. Now that should, at some point now, there's a polling that on that, and here we Ooh. see, we can see our secret has now been reflected inside the cluster. So we're using GitOps to um, control every change that goes into the cluster, but without actually checking in real secret values into the Git repository. Instead, using real secrets managers, which are great for recycling or um, um, uh, revoking uh, uh, secrets, managing secrets well, um, rather than a Git repository. Um, that, that also really helps if you accidentally delete your cluster. That if you delete your cluster and then recreate it again, the external secrets are all populated nicely for you, which is nice. You still there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, there we are. <laughs> I think my internet was going. There we go. Okay, so as external secrets. James, do you want to talk a bit about the pipelines? Stuff? Sure, I'll go quickly because we've really got a time. But um, one of the other big changes in V3 is uh, we used to have a domain specific language that was kind of like an abstraction above uh, Jenkins pipelines and Tecton pipelines. 
With V3, we decided to go all in on just using vanilla Tekton pipeline YAML. So it's much easier for anyone who knows Tekton to just use Tekton inside Jenga Dex. Um, but we also tried to make it really easy to be able to reuse and customize tasks and steps across pipelines. And dealing with pipelines across microservices is actually quite a complicated problem. What we kind of want to do, um, let's say you have 20 microservices and they're all, say, Spring Boot. So you've got 20 Spring Boot microservices in your team. It's probable that those pipelines are all going to be pretty much the same across all of your repositories. But it might be that sometimes one of the microservices wants to change something for one of its steps. So what you could do is you could just copy and paste reams of YAML into every repository, and then you have a maintenance nightmare of keeping everything in sync, upgrading all of the images, making sure that any fix you find in any pipelines is shared across your microservices. What we're trying to do on the Jigasex project is avoid developers even having to look at pipelines or create them or manage them. So what we kind of want to do is encourage people to reuse pipelines across all of their teams and all of their organizations and all of their microservices. So we've put in place a very simple model um, where we can share entire pipeline tasks and steps across all of your repositories. So you don't need to list the specific uh, image tags and versions you're using of all of the different steps. And you don't have to specify what the steps do. You can just reference them by name in a catalog. But we also have a simple way of overriding steps locally. So if you want to specifically modify, say, the command line arguments of a step, you can do that locally in your Git repository. Um, meanwhile, you can share the details of that step in your catalog. So this very simple change means you can use vanilla Tekton tooling to edit your pipelines. But by default, we can share those Tekton YAMLs across all of your repositories, which, is, which have proved super, super useful. Uh, what, one other thing. So we have a bunch of different JX pipeline commands to help you with this. There's JX pipeline effective to visualize the effective pipeline that shows the actual pipeline that would run without having to kind of copy and paste all of the shared fragments of Tekton. Uh, there's te JX pipeline lint, which will lint your Git repository to make sure you haven't messed up any kind of Tekton YAML. Um, and there's also um, a JX pipeline override that lets you override a specific step so that you can uh, change a step from a catalog super easily. So all of these changes together means um, it's easier to reuse Tekton catalog tasks or any Tekton uh, YAML you ever see on the internet, uh, but also we, it's much easier to share pipelines across repositories, which is super useful. Okay, yeah, um, so just very quickly, um, one of the big things we have uh, felt with uh, Jenkins X1 and 2 was we were really embracing continuous delivery, doing lots and lots of releases per day, which was great, um, but it was really hard for users to consume this amount of change. Um, so one of the things we started to look at with V2 was the concept of a version stream. Again, it was using um, a, a Git repository to, as, a, as a quality gate, and then releasing that, and users could then upgrade their clusters, although it wasn't quite right. Um, so building on top of that as well with, with V3, we have these, we have multiple um, uh, Git repositories for uh, these quality gates, which go at different cadences. So you can go on the latest version stream and you can track the latest bleeding edge changes, or you can go on a slower cadence, which gets released maybe one or two months, or you can have your own custom one as well. One of the big advantages that we've got with V3 was a practice, was a, um, um, a, a project called KEPT, KPT. Now, this is a way of basically synchronizing using Git uh, YAML files. So it's perfect for synchronizing changes between of any change that we do, because everything's declarative, because everything is YAML based that we're using in Jenkins X. We can now, now sync these changes into um, your own cluster Git repository. So when we form a release, you can easily consume that change. And we have multiple um, BDE testing on various different things, um, which you'll see on the next slide, all the different things we're, that we've been integrating and working with and testing with. But it's a real, I think we've really feel a lot happier and the, the feedback we've had about this change of using Kept to consume these changes. Um, it's, I think one quote later, uh, we see later on was somebody hadn't upgraded for three months and did one JX uh, GitOps upgrade and they got all, pulled in all the changes and could, could do a diff of all the upgrades and all the changes that were going to go into 
that uh, into their cluster. It makes it much easier to understand what's happening. Like, what is in that upgrade? Like, what exactly changed and why did it change? So you can, it helps you diagnose things. I think one of the things, one of my favorite features of V3, I think, is every Kubernetes resource is versioned in Git. So if anything goes wrong with a particular like deployment or pod or whatever, you can just look at when did this deployment change in Git history, which is super, super awesome. Absolutely. We should probably go speed up a little bit because we've really got a time for questions. Uh, so very briefly, we have a ton of different integrations with lots of awesome open source projects. Uh, if you want to get started on the next slide, uh, if you go to the JiggyZX website, there's guides for all the different cloud providers and all the different kinds of setups you wish. So follow whichever guide suits the cluster that you're using, uh, go there. Um, we should give a big hat tip to the observability work that particularly Vincent has, has done, uh, which is truly awesome. We basically have really awesome integration with uh, various Grafana projects, Grafana and Loki and various other pieces that make it super easy to visualize metrics of all of your pipelines and to visualize traces um, using open telemetry and whatnot. So you can see exactly what's happening with all of your pipelines, how long they all took and get all of those awesome metrics and your DevOps metrics all done in an open source Grafana dashboard, which is truly, truly awesome. De definitely check that one out. Worth mentioning very quickly as well, if it's not already been, then Vincent's doing the talk on this as well. So go and take a look at the talk or catch up on the video afterwards. Definitely. Just some community feedback. Um, uh, and again, we rely on the community, the community's involvement to help build and develop and evolve this uh, with Jenkins X3. So we're very, very proud. And just a big thank you to everybody that's helped get this this far. It's been a real community team effort and it's been lovely to be a part of. So thank you to everyone. And then just to finish off, there is, uh, to find out more, go to the website, jenkinsx.io. Um, there's some walkthroughs, video walkthroughs. We love hearing people's stories and contribute your own blogs and videos and, and feedback as well. Come and say hello on, on Slack channel or, or Twitter. Uh, we love to hear everything, any feedback you have. And well, we hope that uh, you've enjoyed this talk and we're going to have some questions now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Oh. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, keep the questions coming. We're here for a little while. So uh, shoot with any questions you've got on anything. Check it out, CICD, Tecton. Yeah, we've had a few coming through the chat and the Q&As, but yeah, keep, it's been some good questions so far. So one of the questions was uh, open policy agent integration, which we've not really done much with open policy agent yet. Um, we do have a plugin that's around various validation. Um, I'll dig out a link in a second. Um, there's a whole raft of different projects um, for doing validation of Kubernetes resources. It's, it's slightly different, but some people use Open Policy Agent to assert that certain things can and can't be done in the cluster. But also some people use Open Policy Agent as like a, a domain specific language to validate resources before they get applied. So it's a, it's a form of testing. So we do have a plugin, which I'll find in a second, um, that helps you use the various different tools uh, in, as part of your pipeline. There's a whole raft of these tools. So we've basically integrated with most of them. Um, I'll show you in a second. Cube test, that's it. Here's the plugin, I'll post it in the chat. Um, and cube test lets you basically enable and disable various different tools uh, conf test is a plugin tool that lets you use open policy agent assertions to validate the YAML in your charts is valid. Uh, there's QB val that does schema validation. It's fairly simplistic, but it verifies is your schema valid and you haven't made a mistake. Cube score rates the, has a scoring mechanism to do specific validation of your YAML. Um, Polaris is kind of similar as well. So you can kind of enable or disable these tests as part of your pipeline uh, using the cube test plugin. Um, but open policy agent is a more broader discussion. Um, so yes, um, is 
is the relationship between Cloudbees and Jenkins X. Um, so Cloudbees have been sponsoring the development of Jenkins X from day one, um, but Jenkins X is owned by the CDF. So it's, a, it's an open source project, it's funded by the CDF. Um, and yeah. Um, any other questions? Is it, is it possible to rotate secrets um, when they expire with Jenkins X? So, Good question. Yeah, and, and uh, it's also really one of the benefits, I guess, of using external secret providers, because a lot of them have these kind of ways to rotate secrets as well. Um, and now what's actually happening is in, in, that, in that talk there, we have this, there's, an, a, a, there's a controller running inside the cluster, and that's just polling, checking for updated secrets in the real secret store like Google Secrets Manager or Vault. So when they get rotated in the secret store, they then get reflected inside Jenkins X as well. And there was actually another good question above earlier about if there is an environment variable that's loaded from a secret, how do you kind of bounce the pod so that the environment variable gets updated? And there's a link in the chat to we use something called pusher wave that helps up, that watches for uh, secret changes and then can actually uh, restart pods so they were rolling, uh, uh, but, updates the deployment so you get a rolling upgrade of the, of the pod. There was a great question, for, well, a couple of questions have just come in. Brian's question was, can we convert V2 pipelines to Tekton? Yes, there's a link there. We have a converter that does it for you, which is great. Uh, the really nice thing, by the way, in V3, we've gone all in on the Tekton syntax. Um, now, in many ways, if you look at the YAMLs, they're kind of similar, but the great thing is, uh, the Tekton syntax is, is now understood by uh, VS Code and IntelliJ with plugins from Red Hat, so you get really nice type completion and validation and those and so forth. Um, so yeah, we, we, we love the, the use of Tekton syntax, and it's more interoperable. You can use anything from the Tekton catalog. Anything you see on the internet that's Tekton, you can just copy and paste bits and use it in your pipelines. Uh, another great question from Oliver was, um, is it feasible to port a Jenkins file pipeline to uh, Tekton? Um, they're very, very different. If ever you've looked at, say, Jenkins files and, say, GitHub Actions and Tekton, they're all kind of different. On the plus side, if you look at almost anything else but Jenkins files, so if you look at CircleCI or Travis or Drone or um, GitHub Actions, all of those stuff look basically about the same. They're YAML, they run steps in containers, it's fairly easy to move from one of those to Tekton or vice versa. They're pretty, it's pretty simple mechanical stuff. Jenkins files are a whole different kettle of fish because it's, it's a slightly weird version of Groovy that's used in Jenkins that's complicated. So that it, converting it automatically is really quite hard. A few people have tried it and it's never really worked. What I would say is if you've got a Jenkins file that's working, just keep it. Just keep the Jenkins file, don't touch it, just use it as is in Jenkins and then use Jenkins X and Tekton for anything new, any new pipelines, any new projects. And you know, you don't have to boil the ocean and convert everything across to an UCI engine just because it's there. So I I go for the simplest route. Um, just use Jenkins when you've got a Jenkins file that you need. Use Jenkins X and Tekton for everything else. Um, you can also use Jenkins files with Jenkins X. I'm just about to find a link for you. I was also going to say, added to that as well, what some people have done is run them in parallel. So you can have you know, multiple webhooks, one that's sending for a repo, one sending to traditional Jenkins for your Jenkins file, but also sending, if you want to start adding more parallel pipelines with Tekton, then you can start add, building those up, like linting and various other um, uh, pipelines. So you can you can certainly run them to the two in parallel and certainly move things over as and when the project, you, you have time. There's a question on the Q&A. Is it easy to migrate my on-premise Jenkins to Jenkins X? Um, so you, it's easy to move, well, to create a Jenkins server inside Jenkins X and run whatever Jenkins files you wish there. That's fairly straightforward. Moving from Jenkins files to Jenkins X is a slightly more complicated um, thing. And as James was just saying, it's easy just to start off, just import new, use, use Jenkins X for new projects and automate the CI CD for new things. Keep the old stuff where it is, and you know, with whatever Jenkins files you have, um, and then you can try, you know, run it in both and see, you know, are the Jenkins X pipelines good enough for what you need? In case, just switch off the Jenkins ones, um, and if it's missing anything, keep the Jenkins one. You know, so don't don't do a big bang approach. Just incrementally move things over to automated CI/CD when you need it. Um, Some really good questions, then. 
Yeah. We're probably totally over time, aren't we? But never mind. But yeah, great questions. And keep them coming. We're going to be here for a little bit longer. Um, and oh, we should mention uh, if ever you're playing around today and want to get any more help, I'm just going to post a link in the chat. There's a bunch of stuff on the community page. We do uh, every two weeks, we do an office hours, like a meeting where we just turn up and do demos and chat about anything that's um, on our minds. And there's a Slack channel if ever you've got any issues or want to ask questions or whatever. So pop by there. Um, after CDCon, if you want to chat about anything, just pop by. V3 is released. It's GA. It's been released for a few few months now. Yeah. Uh, we've been using production for six months, and it's really awesome. So definitely go with V3. Uh, if you've not tried Jenkins X before, go straight to V3. It's super, super awesome. Uh, we love it. It's much simpler, more stable. Uh, we didn't really talk about it in the presentation, but one of my favorite features, there's lots of them, but one of them is uh, we now check in every single Kubernetes resource to Git apart from secrets. So that you know you install Jenkins X and three months later, you're wondering why is Nginx being weird or why is Cert Manager doing something odd or whatever. You can just go into your Git tool of choice and say, show me the history of this Kubernetes resource forever. And you can see exactly when it was changed. You know, when, when did an environment variable get added? When did the image change? When did it work and when didn't it work? So you can easily use the things we normally do with code with Kubernetes, which is a really lovely thing. Um, lots of people are talking about GitOps and Kubernetes, which is great. But a lot of people miss this detail that checking in like ham files and YAML and all those things is great. But as an end user, it's sometimes hard to understand what Helm and all this values YAML stuff does. Checking in the actual Kubernetes resources into Git really, really helps diagnosing production cluster issues, um, which we found you know, godsend. That's a, that's a good question um, just coming in about um, uh, using SOPs. There's also another approach to checking in encry encrypted secrets into a Git repo. Um, just a quick plug for, for Cara Delamarque. She did a, um, a GitOps and secrets uh, talk earlier on in the week and also went into a lot more detail that we might have time for now. Um, but yeah, we, we actually did used to use this approach. Um, we found a little bit, um, a bit of an overhead, to be honest, because every time we, um, a new member of the team came in, we had to re-encrypt uh, re the, the secrets using GPG, and it was it was a bit of an overhead. And also, every time we wanted to change the secret, then you have to go into each individual re uh, Git repository. Um, having a secret manager that's des purely designed for managing secrets, it just feels it feels right, and uh, it's in the central place. Um, and they have rotation approaches themselves and other secret features. So yeah. kind of just, kind of, yeah, having tried the both, using a real secret store, secret manager, it's, um, it's work, it does work out better, better UX yeah. as well. I mean, SOPS does work, yeah. but we've just found external secrets is just an easier UX. We had all kinds of things that, you know, developers on the team couldn't even, uh, run builds locally because they hadn't got their GPG keys in the signing ring and all this kind of stuff. So it, it's just easier to work with secret managers, really. Um, and, and also, it, it, you, you're, you're, do it, you're using, you have files that are locally that are unencrypted. And it just, for, personally, this personal uh, taste, yeah. uh, it's, it feels risky. Um, it, the things can get leaked yeah. accidentally and uh, you make, make mistakes, people are human. Having them in the secret store and away from you know, your fingertips, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot better. It's also much more secure um, yeah. because then, you know, you might not give your developers access to see any of the secrets. Um, and you can, with secret managers, you can have role-based access control on every single secret. So rather than decrypting every single secret in the entire Git repository for absolutely everything, you can have different roles and different people can see different secrets or write different secrets or read different secrets. So it, it is much, much more secure. But hey, you know, if you're using SOPs and it's working for you, crack on, that's great. Um, but secret managers are a bit nicer and a bit easier, particularly with the auto-rotation as well is another thing that's particularly handy. Um, yeah, it also makes it easy if you've got, if you're trying to use the same app in many environments, it's easier to plug in secret managers separately than having to keep changing Git to swap all these secrets around. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a fair point, Oliver. You, you can you set up KMS to help with the decryption. Uh, so there are ways, I mean, it's one of those things, SOPs by itself is hard to use. You can optimize the process a lot to make SOPs easier and easier and easier. 
Um, but I've never seen it get as close to as easy as it is to use a real secret manager. Like they're, they're just the easiest thing to use, but yeah. you know, use whichever you like. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the beauty of this. I mean, the, the, what what was the same with with Jenkins X is we, we like Git Git for, for for things. So if you want, you prefer using SOPs. If your workflows for your tech teams use SOPs, absolutely. We're not you, know, you can carry on using that absolutely. Uh, if you will have a secrets management store, then use that as well. Um, so it's, it's that's the beauty of using you know, the GitOps approach that we've come with. There's a question in the Q&A about any plans to integrate SAML support for the UI. Um, we do have a, I'll dig out the link in a second. We do I'll have, do that. oh, do you want to do that? Um, we do have a, uh, some docs on how to enable like OAuth or whatever um, on the UIs. Um, it's fairly easy to customize and do whatever you want to do. So you should be able to use any kind of uh, authentication, whether it's a proxy or a service or whatever. Um, but we do have docs on how to set up OAuth with the UIs. Uh, basically with a dashboard um, but yeah that it should be easy to configure it to do whatever you like really um, yeah UI is one of the tricky things with UIs is you want you want to we default to basic auth because it's easy but that's not very secure obviously um, so we we would prefer you to use something like a wall or something like that but, uh, Jim's just posted the link the one um, drawback of the, about the OAuth there is it spins up a, a, a an OAuth proxy, which is fine, but it's only for one ingress. If you want something more advanced, then using something like Dex um, is a, is a good alternative as well. So you can have multiple endpoints yeah. securing everything, all of your applications um, using that approach. But it's it's a you have to it's a bit to get your head around to be honest. So it's um, you know, maybe could yeah. set set aside some time to figure that out. Also, Keycloak is another one, but uh, Dex is pretty cool. And you do need to make sure you've got TLS and DNS and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, go it, like JKZX just works pretty much in any cluster, and it's great. But then to make it real, like a real production cluster, now, TLS and DNS and external DNS and certs created, and then OAuth on top of all that. Just take a little bit of uh, you know ops ninja. I mean, it's totally possible, and there's docs on the website for it. Yeah. How does Jenkins X work with commercial cloud based Jenkins? That's a very good question. Uh, it mostly doesn't. In other words, stuffs either in Jenkins X or stuffs in cloud based Jenkins, yeah. and you you pick which one you want to use for any particular job. Now, what's really interesting, and a lot of people don't realize, is you can have pipelines running in GitHub Actions, in Jenkins X with Tekton, and in CloudBees Jenkins, all on the same repository. So it's it's not really an either or. So for any repository, you could do linting in Jenkins X or something, or you could do preview environments with Jenkins X, but use CloudBees Jenkins for releases because you've always done it like that or whatever. So you can mix and match uh, different CI tools and, and, and tooling. Um, I'm hoping that longer term, Jenkins X will uh, have a, a more integration uh, uh, with CloudBees's CI project product, um, but right now today there's nothing we can talk about. Uh, any more questions? But almost. Don't know any questions. Yet. Oh, great. <laughs> 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 It does look like almost, I'm not sure, it's like a crown almost. It, it does a bit crowdy. If you put your head right underneath, maybe I need to put my head there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fez. I'm not a uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for attending. Um, yes. Keep the questions coming either here or on Slack or on issues. Um, good luck. Go, go check his ex. Take his ex. Hopefully to see you soon. Cheers. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>